Hello, it's me. And this is the W1. I'm going to review it. Yeah. All right, for those of you that don't know, the W1 is a pure HE layout made by Gion from Gionworks, our very good friend. Uh, it ran quite a while back, and it was about $390 US ad group buy. It's a fairly simple three-piece design. You've got a top, you've got a bottom, you've got a weight. No plate, because this is PCB mounted using uh, tadpoles uh, to basically top mount. Additionally, you could uh, just standard top mount using screws. Now, it was kind of designed specifically for a thin PCB to have like a very, very comfortable flexi typing experience. And it's got a, again, comfortable front height of about 17 millimeters and a good eight degree angle, which is, you know, it's solid. It's a decent hefty boy at about 2.6 kilos built. And of course, it comes with a hard case. It comes with uh, 10U stab wires. It comes with 10U actual keycaps. And it came in uh, black, navy, burgundy, pink, and gray. Uh, the unit I have here is gray. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, words. All right, here we are. We have a lovely keyboard. Uh, disclosure, uh, this is not my keyboard. This belongs to a friend of mine. Uh, I have built this for him uh, as per his uh, build request. That is why there is an ISO enter and a long left shift and a lot of other confusing things. But let's not worry about that. Uh, follow up on the disclosure, I do have my own W1, which I received from Gion for free. Uh, because I did, in fact, help with the design and development of this board. So there is some bias there, considering the fact that I literally designed the mounts. So I'll see you guys there. All right. So from the top, it comes in a hard case, as many Gion boards do. This is a fully custom hard case. And honestly, this is the best hard case Gion has done so far. Uh, the glare hard case really struggles with the weight of the glare. The F1 and prior hard cases were just a little cheap feeling. This is a lot thicker. It's the same basic interior structure, but it kind of fits a lot better. So let's, top, let's drop our W1 in here. Boom. There are no straps. Keep that in mind. So something I would like to see down the line is straps, though I am very happy to get a keyboard in a hard case because I can actually transport it, uh, especially with something like this, where you couldn't really get something custom because this ratio of keyboard size is not really a standard size. So you've got a little bit here that essentially covers the board to keep it from flopping around, though straps would be better. We've got a tag that says made in China. Gasp. And here is where your PCB, your screws, and your tadpoles would be, as well as your 10U bars when you get your unit. Very nice. Okay. So considering that this is indeed a pretty simple board, I'm going to talk more about the experience because plenty of people have reviewed this. Plenty of people have talked about it. You can look up the specs. It's not any, it's not anything wild. Okay. So first of all, Gion, we love Gion. Okay. Design wise, it is very, very simple. You've got thicker bezel on the top versus the bottom and equivalent bezels here. This looks to be about six, uh, six millimeters. This looks to be about seven millimeters or eight that looks to be nine or ten just to give you an idea of the ratio i didn't measure it deal with it side is simple it's a wedge but it's a wedge with a little bit of a cutout here to give it a koala-esque feel which pretty cool the back is 100 percent flat and if you haven't noticed this like most geon boards are very fingerprinty but we'll get there. Nice little machined Gion logo that 
the camera refuses to focus on, and a very, very deep USB port. So for a standard cheap USB cable, it goes in, no problem. For a big, expensive custom USB cable, it doesn't go in. It seems like it's in, but it doesn't, it doesn't reach all the way in, which feels bad. All right, front, simple. We've got no cherry lip, nothing like that. It's just a nice, simple, flat front. And the bottom, where all the business is, we've got ourselves a very, very large weight. See, I thought this was steel, but just hitting it makes me think it's brass. Makes me think it's coated brass. I'll put something on the screen if I am right. All right, and let's get a nice little zoom on here. We have our standard Geon feet. By standard, I mean W1 standard. Uh, nice and simple. Got a nice engraving where it says W1AT. And here it says, designed and manufactured in South Korea, Geon works. Nice. All right, so finishing is well, pretty much what you'd expect from Gion finishing. It's not the most amazing anodization in the world. We can see a good amount of grain here on the silver bottom. And uh, note, all bottoms are silver, no matter what color you get. So a little bit of grain. Like you can see the speckles of the aluminum, which is, you know, not really a problem. But it, it do get dirty. It do get dirty. You can see see some filth there that just it just it just draws. It just draws in the filth. And then the top, again, anodization is about the same. It's it's simple gray. It's not it's not super consistent, but you know, it's it's good. For the price, it's good. For the price, it's good. Works easy enough. We take those. All right. So in terms of finishing, like the glare was much better than this. If you've seen a glare or you have a glare, uh, this is more uh, later runs of F1 in terms of like finishing quality where like, you know, the grays aren't the best, the silvers aren't the best. Uh, I don't have other colors here and my personal unit is white, which is a one of one. So like, I can't really tell you how good the other colors are, the uh, the burgundy, the, the pink, the, uh, the blue, but this to me looks a lot like F1 finishing. All right, so assembly is simple enough. It has screws on the bottom. We unscrew the screws. Let's see. Nope. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we've got four hidden screws under the feet, as we usually do. Now, it is to be noted that the threads are not super clean. And like in this one right here, I can hear and feel that there's, you know, residue, like little bits of aluminum grit and stuff in this crew hole, which generally is an indication of like, you know, how much care and attention was put into the quality control or the finishing process, usually the finishing process. So there are ways around this. What you can do is you can fill the holes prior to sandblasting and anodizing. That way, none of it goes in the hole. But hey, it is what it is. For all intents and purposes, this is a relatively budget board, especially for what you get. And that's pretty much the standard with all Geon boards, as you guys should be very aware. All right, last one. Okay, this one is also a little gunky, so it's just these two quarters that were quite gunky. All right, so this does use long screws towards the back, and shorter screws towards the front. As is customary, we will inspect the screws. Do a little screw inspection. Now, you can't really tell that there's gunk at the tip of this one, but there absolutely is. It's very hard to pick up on camera. just near the tip of here, a little gunky, 
little gunky. However, the screws themselves are good. It's gnarled at the tip, which is, I mean, for the one, two times you get to take it apart, you can twist it with your fingers a little bit. Fine. Uh, finishing on the screws looks good. The screws themselves are like a solid eight, nine out of 10. It's just the threads on the actual board. Not so great. All right. So we can see that the JST cable length is not great. So you can take it apart in this direction, but you cannot do the opposite. You can't move this over here. The cable does not reach, which whatever, it's fine. You can just pull it out. It's easy enough to reach. All right. Uh, we're going to do a really quick run through of the case because, again, I want to talk more about the experience more than anything else. So. So similar to the uh, frog aesthetic of the uh, uh, through weight on the frog, it's very simple here where boom, 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 boom. These are all part of the singular weight that goes all the way across the bottom. Uh, we've got Gian engraved here. We've got some memes engraved. Uh, it might be hard to pick up, so let's go macro cam. So we have a meme here. It says Sam, yes. We have memes on the other side that say developed with Black Simon, big meme. So fairly simple. It's a uh, seamless assembly. So the top essentially sits over the bottom. So I, I don't need to see any alignment tabs or any alignment pillars. The case itself is going to align just fine. We have uh, little uh, locations where the tadpoles essentially rest on the bottom. And we've got ourselves a tiny USB daughter board. It looks like the uh, standard AI03 footprint. Uh, probably looks like a Heine model, if I'm not mistaken. If this was a longer form review, I would pull it out, but I assume it's Heine. No, actually, no. Because Ian Carr did, uh, did the PCB. So probably that. So bottom, here's our top. Uh, assembly is very, very simple. Standard tadpoles. So they go through the PCB. They go into the top. That's all she wrote. Here's our top. This is probably our very dirty threads with all the gunk in them. Finishing on the interior looks good. Unironically, the finishing on the interior looks better than the exterior, though I can see some light machining lines here. Uh, to you, it's just going to look like a, a little gradient until you see it in person. Then you'll actually see the machining lines. But again, it's on the interior. Thin machining lines on the interior, totally fine. Let's have a look at our PCB. Uh, this is a 1.2 millimeter PCB. Uh, you can tell because I can do this. So the, 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 the entire design concept of this was to allow a very, very good amount of flex. For the record, I'm not using much force. Like I'm barely using any force here. I'm like letting gravity do its thing. So PCB mount, of course, that means there is no plate. But during assembly, Gion gives us the equivalent of a plate fork. It's basically a dummy plate that you uh, put all your switches in, you solder all your switches, and then you break off the tabs, and it allows you to have perfectly straight switches, at least for your first build, which is great. Uh, PCB layout support is very good. You can tell because we have our split uh, double zero here. We've got ISO support natively. Uh, support is everything you'd ever want. Thin PCB uh, does come with shims. I was double checking to make sure these are not my own shims, but yes, does come with shims uh, on the 1.2 mil. And I do recommend the 1.2 mil. Maybe we'll talk about that. And these are, if I'm not mistaken, the second hardest of the Tadpole variants. Uh, when I originally built this, I built it with the uh, second or third softest one, and it was just way too wild for me. Me, the man that designed the mount to be as flexy as possible, found it too flexy. So, giggle. 
So mount consistency, uh, I'll reassemble it and, and basically show you how consistent it is, how much flex you get in certain areas. So I'll do that as I talk about my build suggestions. So uh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely use good switches. By good switches, I mean like cherry switches. Uh, by cherry switches, I mean proper cherry spec that has the correct size feet. Because if I am not mistaken, uh, Gion may have had a problem with some of the PCBs. I'm not sure if this particular one suffers from the issue, but he made the, uh, the switch feet holes slightly too big. Uh, generally, cherry spec is 0.7 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, generally what we do when we make PCBs is we do about uh, 0.69. And 0.69 basically allows like a tight enough fit with non-cherry switches. But I think he may have gone over the 0.7. Uh, if you're in the comments and you actually like know the exact figures, please correct me because I am not big, smart PCB man. I am small, dumb PCB man. All right, give me a second. I need tweezers because my hands are stupid. We do a little stupid hands. So absolutely, when you build this, don't don't go JWK, don't go like TTCs, don't go something that's going to have tiny little switch feet that that are not cherry spec. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. I mean, that is a given with pretty much any non-cherry spec switches or any non-cherry switches with like a few exceptions. But hey, what can you do? So don't don't meme around. Uh, absolutely go with a a clacky switch, not like a super, super deep switch because you're building it either on a 1.2 or a 1.6 millimeter PCB and PCB mount is going to sound like PCB mount no matter what you do. There's no way around it. By the way, this is a perfectly feasible way of putting it together where you just put the PCB on the other side and smush the top over it. And the tadpoles all go in their respective holes. So let's close it up real quick. So absolutely go loop switches, that goes without saying. Absolutely, you know, take the care and attention to do your stabs properly because on PCB mount, it's kind of unforgiving. PCB mounts are going to be higher pitched no matter what you do. So either you can embrace it and, you know, go like thin sounding switches, uh, something like full polycarbonate, like uh, fully clear switches, for example, uh, or you could, go the other way and try to compensate for the fact that you know pcb mounts sounds like pcb mount and that means you could go very very deep in terms of your switches you can film your switches go with a uh, thicker grade of lube maybe some 205 grade zero uh go with thick p uh, uh pbt key caps instead of abs or you know thin abs for example but you know the thicker uh the cap you're gonna go with the less I don't know how to explain it, but the less real of an experience you're going to have, you know, in order to feel the flex and to feel all of the nuances of the board, if you put thick caps on it, it's going to be like, you know, trying to pick up a screw with a thick rubber glove. You're not going to feel what's going on. So I would recommend not going too wild. Uh, obviously, if you're not into plateless and you're not into, you know, Korean sounding or, you know, higher pitch sounding boards, the W1 is probably not for you. And if the W1 layout or the AT layout is not your cup of tea, then again, this is not for you. Hot take from a work perspective, from a business perspective, when I was at the office, this was actually quite difficult to work on. I'm very used to having main layer arrows and maybe a numpad and having the numpad without main layer arrows is kind of a pain in the ass. So what I did is what you're supposed to do is you can hit numlock and it'll give you arrows and nav and you can hit numlock and it'll give you numbers. However, for me, I prefer having the things I'm going to use on a main layer. So it's very, very annoying. So I put my arrows on a secondary layer, kept the numpad, but even then it was a pain where, you know, I'd 
be trying to enter digits while moving with the arrow and it would just, it's impossible. I can't type a four and go left at the same time, for example. Uh, besides that, didn't really have an issue with layout. Uh, XG column is nice. I realistically don't use it much. I have my Fs here, my F1 to F12. Uh, this is generally for macros and only macros. But it's it's a weird layout to get used to. And, you know, the code name for this project was the weird thing. WT. Anyway. Aside from layout, I do like the board a lot. You might like the board. So let's talk about mount consistency. Let me straighten up the board. All right, so here's me pressing the A. I'm using a, let's say, half a pound of force, around about 200 grams or so force. Not a big amount of force. This is a large amount of force. This is a reasonable amount of force. So I'm going to move down the board. I'm now with the D, the G, the H, the J, the K, L, and now I'm at the far side. And at this point, the movement you're seeing is the entire desk mat going up and down. So consistency-wise, we can see that pressing the control doesn't, doesn't drop the entire PCB. Let's try the F9. So that's what I'm talking about there. As you approach the edge of the PCB and you put weight on it, naturally it's going to flex away from you unless you have a mount point right here, but then it's not going to feel great. Uh, F1 will be very similar where it'll just dump into the case. But for the actual 60% cluster, it's good. So your 60% cluster is nice, flexy, you get a little bit of bounce, but it doesn't, it doesn't just fold away into the case. The enter, and of course the, the far right, yeah. But there's a lot of flex in there. There's a lot of flex. So keep in mind, when you have a flexi PCB or a flexi build, always near the edges, you're going to have something like this. But the idea is to make sure that your default typing area is not affected by that. And that was mission accomplished. Uh, during actual use, I never had an issue with, you know, something feeling weird because like, Normally what feels weird is if you're holding down shift or you're holding down control, for some reason you have your control here instead of here, let's not talk about it, but you hold that down and like, it, it, it feels kind of weird. This doesn't suffer from there. So unless you're holding down your F9, you're not really going to notice it. Ah, uh, keep in mind that this is with relatively, uh, stiff tadpoles, uh, when I get my unit. Uh, because it's with Paul right now, who's building it for me. When I get my unit, I have every single tadpole weight. So I might actually go full meme and try thin PCB with the absolute softest tadpoles. Uh, I kind of tried that with this build, not with the absolute softest tadpoles, but semi-soft tadpoles, and it was way too flexy for me. So I want to see what full flex actually feels like. So... I understand that different people like different things, which is why there's a 1.6 millimeter uh, PCB variant of this, uh, which is why you can get uh, harder tadpoles. And if you do pick up one of these, I do recommend getting the full suite of tadpoles just to tune your experience because taking it apart and changing the tadpoles takes five minutes, which is amazing. Uh, and then even then, remember that you can just screw it in. You can just go full on top mount. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it because you're losing a lot of the potential experience that you get with tadpoles, especially soft tadpoles. But listen, if 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 you want a PCB mount and you want it to be really, really stiff, you go 1.6 millimeter, screw it in, and you're good to go. So uh, before we go into the typing test, of course, we need to check the bussy town ability. Now, this is a long boy. It is a wide load. So see, we can see that the entire desk mat is actually moving. So that's good. That's, that's good grip. That's the amount of grip you want. To be fair, this is a heavy enough board where it doesn't really need the grip, but it has the grip. It's, it's a very grippy boy. So 
I would not recommend driving this in downtown Bussy Town, especially around the roundabouts. But besides that, the feet are not bad. All right, I'm going to jump uh, straight into a quick typing test, and then I'll give you a summary. But to be fair, this is a short enough video. Enjoy. All right, so W1, very, very long keyboard. It's nice. I like it. I am obviously biased. I don't like the layout, personally. It's not for me, at least from an efficiency standpoint. But from at least uh, if, if, if we consider the vision of what was planned for sound and feel, eh, we pretty much nailed it. It's a good looking keyboard. It's a good working keyboard. And yeah, 10 out of 10. <laughs> anyway, if you're still watching and it is October uh, or Thoctober, uh, please note that there is Thoctober merchandise that is only available for the month of Thoctober. Links down below. Don't miss out. Here we have last year's amazing Thoctober shirt. It's amazing. This year's Thoctober shirt, solid. Anyway, if you like keyboard reviews and you like keyboards, drop a sub, drop a thumb, leave me a comment, slide into my Discord DMs and send me pictures of your cat's feet. Goodbye.